All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to Thursday Night Class. Uh, today, obviously, if you saw the title of the Zoom, we're going to be talking about the personalities of a trader. I know that I've touched on this multiple times uh, with classes in the past already, but I do want to bring this up a few more times for a lot of different reasons. I feel like there's a lot of people that don't actually understand that if you really want to be, I want to say, a successful trader, not just, oh, I want to be a trader. I'm just going to keep it like that. But if you actually want to be a successful trader, so many people don't really comprehend the fact that you really have to dig into who you are as a person and use that information to actually correlate it into trading, figure out what you're strong at, what you're weak at. Because when you know you're weak at something, a lot of people just want to avoid that fact and just not like entertain that thought or not put effort in to try and fix that, make them a stronger person, obviously. So when I try and teach, I'm always focused on like the bad side of stuff, the risk associated, the fact of like, what are you not good at that you have to improve on? I understand the idea of like, it was a successful trade or I did good today. There's nothing to fix, but I'm a huge believer in the fact of there's always something to work on. There's always something that you can achieve to do more with a positive outcome, even if you feel that you did from start to finish the best that you could. So while I talk about this topic you guys can type questions as I'm speaking. I don't really plan on showing any charts. I don't plan on showing much other than me just typing keywords I talk about or the key topics I plan on mentioning throughout this. So I'm mostly just going to start and just dive right into the overall purpose of why I want to do this, why I personally thought of this topic. I know someone, I want to say the first two or three weeks into doing the academy, they mentioned we should talk about like the different type of traders that there are, swing traders, day traders, scalpers traders that only play like leaps, which are months expo out or even just a year out expiration. So I'm trying to find a way to show people that if you don't understand the different concepts of a scalp, a swing, just a day trade hold that's two to three hours long, there's a lot of different unique styles of trading that could fit, like fit in with your personality or the way that you portray life, the way that you portray your daily lifestyle. Maybe you're not big on patience. Maybe you're not big on the fact that you want to make money right away. You want to take your time and grow as you grow money with your portfolio. So while I'm going through this topic, I'm hoping that you guys notice something you may not have heard before. Maybe you notice something you wish that you would have heard sooner and you want to hear more about it on a more elaborative uh, information base, basically. So just to dive into this, I'm going to, let me get this back over to the left side. I'm going to start with this, mostly just talking about scalp traders. And the reason I want to start with scalps, so many people, this is the main thing they see on social media. It's the main thing that they see the quick money with large returns, but they don't really understand the risk that's associated. They don't understand the type of, I don't want to say personality, but the type of traits that you need to have, not even as a trader, but as just a human being. The fact that when you're scalping, you're not anticipating some 500% move if you're playing the week of expiration. If you have an expiration that expires on a Friday for a regular stock like Amazon, Apple, Tesla, whatever it could be, and even SPX or SPY, if you want to throw that in there as well, just not a zero DTE expiration. You have to understand that if you're scalping, you're not really going to have the idea of I can make 500% in a few minutes. If you don't have a short period of time before the expiration does come to where you need it to, you're not going to make a quick return. Uh, so Sejan said, I'm trying to trade while working a full-time job. Where can I, where I can only break away to pay full attention to the market for a few minutes, several times a day is scalping the best type of trade for me. So scalping, this is an issue I dealt with personally about, I mean, I still know how to deal with this, but I had to find a way to like manure my schedule while working the job two, three years ago, four years ago. When I first started, I wasn't making money. I was struggling. I was trying to make huge returns when I had no way of looking at my phone nonstop at work, or I couldn't look at it for like 10 minutes straight. So the biggest thing that I tell people, if you're able to scalp while you're busy, not even just a job, just say you're busy, you're, you're with the kids, you're with family, you're with your brothers, you're out and about just trying to get a quick trade in. It's not even about the fact of like, how can I do this or what's best for me? Can you handle the fact that if you lose knowing you're not at a setup, that you're not at a safe haven of, okay, I can sit here and watch and wait for something. You have to realize the outcome that's possible if you don't have the full focus that you may need. 
I know a lot of people that I've talked to that work and they trade at the same time when they have to switch back and forth. It's not even the idea of like, man, I, I lost this trade. The main thing they're thinking about is like when they make money, it's like, I wish I didn't have this job because I could be doing this all day. If I just had time to like watch longer, I could have held longer. So what worked best for me, whenever I do classes, if you guys are new or you've already heard me say this, I apologize, but I'm very big on how I have been through stuff and I speak on what I've experienced. I try not to have a biased opinion for other people. I basically give my experience through what I've done. And hopefully you can find a way to ask questions off of what I've been through. And I can try and correlate to how your lifestyle is. So when I was working my job, scalps were a lot less emotional, I would say, because when you're swinging a play, you're not able to look. So you're always like, and for me, in the back of my head, when I'm in a swing play, when I was at the job, I would always be thinking like, what if I'm down 20%, but I can't look at my phone right now? Or what if like I'm up 20%, I don't know it yet. And then I'm thinking, oh shoot, I got to check my phone, but I don't have time right now. Like what if I miss selling or like miss selling at a good spot. And then when I go back on my phone an hour later, I could be down 20% and I had a chance to sell at 20% gains. So the biggest thing that I found for myself, I am an extremely patient person now, but back in the day when I first started trading, I would see huge gains. I'd see people make thousands of dollars, not realizing they were putting in thousands to make thousands right back in a few minutes or a few seconds. So through the journey of myself, I would want to scout. I'd want to just get in and out and then call it a day. But as I started to do that, I realized, do I really just want to put in two minutes a day once I like have more time at home, once I have more time to sit and relax and actually find a setup? So as I used scalps, I would make money, I'd lose money. It was never a consistent basis on who I was. I was not good with patience back then. So I wanted that in and out. As I grew as a trader, as I grew as a person, and as I realized that time is really the best thing to use in your favor with trading, uh, swinging with longer expirations, it does cost more to enter specific contracts, but you have way more time to let stuff sit and it doesn't affect your percent portfolio Overall, stocks can move way heavier, whether it's against you or for you. And obviously, when you add time to expiration, you all should know this, uh, move downside against you, you're not going to lose a heavy percent gain or a heavy percent loss. But also in the reverse side, you're not going to make a huge percent return if you're swinging a large expiration time zone, like you have more time with your expiration. So for me, it was the fact of if I'm able to swing with time, I can size light now. And as I'm making money, if I'm consistent with this, if I'm able to make, let's say nine wins out of 10 and overall for the week, I know that I'm up so-and-so amount on my portfolio, I can size heavy swinging, not having to worry because my historical risk to my reward is always in my favor. I'm making money sizing light. So all I have to do is do the same strategy. I have to do the same idea, maybe size a few more contracts if I'm able to for my portfolio size. I'm able to work and let that trade marinate, let it sit. Because when I've tested it already, I'm successful. I just can't force trades thinking, oh, I'm unstoppable. I can keep doing this because I'm not losing. I'm going to size heavier because I trust myself. I would let my results change the way I trade. I would not let the way I thought about myself make me size heavier or make me rush a trade thinking, oh, I'm going to chase this and I'm going to make money on it because it worked last time. I would have to literally like, decisively go into every win, every loss and figure out, can I really do this while I'm at the day job? Can I really do this when I'm working during the week? And as time went on, while I'm busy out and about, I'm always doing swing trades. I'm rarely doing scalps. I'm really doing like, I'm going to buy today and sell today. If I enter with a lot of time and the stock just moves in my direction, I'm up pretty well. I will sell the day of, but that's not the thought I have entering. So when doing swing trades, and obviously I'm on the topic of scalps, but I want to try and elaborate on this question while I can. The biggest thing about swings, you're not focused on, oh, I'm up this much, I got to get out. Or, oh, this is like a good entry point, I'm going to buy in right now, and whatever happens, happens. You're waiting for a chart to form, knowing you need lowest risk to highest reward with this swing trade. You're not able to look at it throughout the day. You're not able to just sit there and monitor it every 30 minutes, every hour, maybe even every three hours. So as I did that, I realized if I just wait, even if it's one trade a week, the best possible setup that I could enter is going to make me more money than trying to rush trades that I may not have the best execution on because I could be red. Every percent matters. Like if you enter a trade and you're down 20%, 
you could have entered better and not have a risk being down 20%. And instead, when it does bounce back to that bad entry of you being at break even, if you would have entered better, you could be up 25%, 30%. So I would take my time with realizing it's not really about, do I have time to scalp? Do I have time to actually uh, swing trade? I was more focused on monitoring the charts without entering, focused on where's the best way for me to enter this where I don't have to watch my phone. And I've gotten to that point where I can sit at a setup with a desktop, a monitor, my mic, talking to people, texting people. I can enter and just walk away from my setup. It's the same thing as being on the job. If you have that emotional stability, if you know within yourself that you entered well, your execution was where it needed to be, you don't have to monitor a trade 24-7, even if you have the time. So for me, going off the last thing you said, uh, you said that's exactly what I'm thinking multiple times a day, as in like, what if I'm down? What if I'm up while you're busy? You can't look at your phone that much. I've been wanting to quit to full-time trade, but I know it's extremely risky. Focus on your historical results and use that moving forward as you start to size heavier. Obviously, if you size, let's say $100 a position and you're only selling 10%, you're only making $10 a trade, which going off the money financial standpoint, that's a horrible daily amount, like $10 a day. I can't do nothing with that. But if you focus on the longevity of trading, and I'm always speaking on long term, a year from now, two years from now, the growth that comes with compound interest on your portfolio if you're sizing $100 making 10%, imagine sizing $1,000 making 10% or sizing $5,000 making 10%. As you grow your account and you grow that emotional stability, the fact of my execution has been on point. When I enter trades, the most I'm usually down is about 10 to 15% and my wins are usually 30% to 40%. At that point, you understand your wins are outweighing your losses from a per percent perspective. The money result does not matter because one oversize with a bad entry point, you could lose a whole week of gains based off your, I don't want to say a hothead or your big ego, but a lot of traders that make a big win, they want to size heavier right away, not realizing, okay, was this last trade I had, was it a good trade? Did I actually learn something? Did I actually execute a plan that worked out or did I just enter and I held longer than usual and it just worked out in my favor? So when it comes to your question, which I know I just rambled a lot, but I want to get an overall picture, not just uh, you should do this if you're working a day job because of this reason. I want you to think about more than just, I want to quit my job and do full-time trading. Is your historical hit rate good enough to make you not have to look for another job if you quit where you're at right now? Is your portfolio set where if you lose $1,000 in a day, you're not scared, you're not worried about, man, is this really for me? You have to be emotionally stable at any part in life if you're like a lot of times i tell people if you're like iffy about a part of your life and you try and trade while still thinking about that moment or that uh situation going on it's gonna affect your trading because you can't intertwine life with trading you have to be like stable on all standpoints all strongholds within like your daily lifestyle so when it comes to like what you think i personally recommend doing swing trades when it comes to a day job only because that's what worked for me I was able to add time to contracts. I was able to size one contract that's worth 300 bucks, one contract that's worth 450, or I would have to readjust and play cheaper stocks that the contracts a month out, they're only 50 bucks, but they move a lot slower. So as I figured that out for me, I knew I couldn't scalp on the job because the way I was two years ago, three years ago, I wasn't able to just buy in and let it sit. So I had to learn, I had to figure out what do I have to change to make my patients get better so I'm able to do this at the job. I wanna scalp, but I know if I enter and I sell for a loss, I'm not gonna be able to perform at my job with a like positive mindset. I'm gonna be upset the rest of the day. I'm not gonna wanna be there. And then sure enough, I'm gonna wanna chase the losses maybe at the end of the day for power hour. Maybe the next day I wanna try and make back what I lost. So I worked on just executing, buying in when it was best for me and not for my financial outcome with the trade, making sure my emotions were out of the picture with the swing trading. And if that was too much to like, I didn't even answer your question, type anything else you have, but I wanted to try and elaborate so that other people that may be in the same situation, they may understand from like what I just said, oh, I, I'm not in that same scenario like this guy is, but that helped me because I don't have patience. So what do I have to do to overcome that? Swing trading is the best way to really focus on the charts and not just focus on, man, I want to make a thousand a day. You can make a thousand a day easily doing swing trades, but you have to realize 
you have to size heavier for that since the percentages won't move as much downside or upside. That's the biggest thing about swing trading. So kind of going off center, going back to scalping, the whole idea with scalp traders is the fact of, uh, let me read what uh, he said real quick. He said, thanks, man. Ego aside, I'm not ready for full-time trading mentally, to be completely honest. We'll look into swing trading more. I say swing trading just so you focus on charts over the outcome of the finance perspective. If you can execute good, you'll be able to size at some point, hopefully 10,000, 50,000 in a trade. And you're not worried because you know, going off the chart, sizing 100 bucks, sizing 50,000, I entered on the chart and that's what's going to play out. And that's the outcome I'm going to get. Win or loss, I followed the chart. That's the biggest thing to focus on for a swing trader. So when it comes to scalps, you have to be extremely quick. Not with just, oh, let me click my keyboard and buy in. Let me click my mouse and buy in. You have to think way faster than a swing trade. You have to think last second without even knowing this was going to happen before you entered. Scalp traders have to have a very quick thinking mindset. And when I say that, it's not just the, oh, geez. It's not just the idea of like, I have to sell. Let me get out. It's the idea of if a pattern breaks, Look for another pattern, maybe on a larger time frame. Look for something that clarifies what just happened so you know you have to get out for a small loss. You can't hold on to positions as a scalper because most scalpers, they're playing with heavy size or light size, but the time for expiration is way shorter than it is for a swinger or maybe even a day trader. So they're always focused on the quick move. They're focused on the in and out. I just want to make a quick amount and just get out right away. You're looking at the reverse side of the risk, you have to realize as a scalper, if you don't have a lot of time for your expiration, you are buying in blindly, not realizing if this goes against you heavily, you could be down a lot more than you expected. So another trait that the way I feel about a scalper, you basically have to ex uh, expect the unexpected. And this is hard to type and talk. The biggest thing about scalpers, the outcome is never going to be a guarantee unless the chart plays out. But the biggest thing about that, is it really going to go the way you plan? Is it really going to go the way the setup is forming? You have to be quick thinking. You have to ex basically expect what you're not really expecting. A lot of people, they just want to get in. They're up 20%. Oh, I want to sell at 20%. Next thing they know, the trade's up 50%, 60%. So now their mindset is on the idea of, okay, next time I enter the trade and I'm up 20%, I'm going to hold a little bit longer because I missed out on 40% extra gains last trade. What they aren't, what they are not looking at was the chart strong and they just didn't realize that and they sold too soon. For the next trade, what if you're up 20% and you go back down to break even? Is the chart set up strong? Was everything aligning the same way as the last trade you sold too early? People are focused on the outcome. They're not focused on the setup or the chart. Every strategy that I talk about is going to involve the charts, the setups, the patterns, the trends. Everything correlates, but it's only the time in and out that's different. The patience of having swings, the quick thinking of having a scalp. Everything correlates with the charts. Everything flows with setups. Everything's about smaller frames versus larger frames. Maybe someone wants to scalp on the larger frames, but they don't know how to really like, identify things. That's when the smaller frames come into play so you can see stuff within those larger candles that you may not be able to see compared to the two hour and the one minute or the two hour and the five minute. Everyone is so stuck on, I just want to get in and out. Well, say you get in, you sell for a loss. What did you learn from that? Did you execute correctly? The whole personality trait of a scalper in summary basically is just you have to expect the unexpected. The idea of scalping is very easy if you make, say, a thousand bucks in 20 minutes, two thousand bucks in 20 minutes. But the way I look at it when I see people talking about this stuff is what did you risk? Where did you enter? What was the risk associated if it went against you? Where were you going to trim for a loss? Where were you going to sell for a win if it did keep going past what you wanted? There's so many factors that come into this that a lot of people won't mention because they don't want to talk about stuff they didn't plan. A lot of people just want to get in, get out. Okay, I won, I lost, it's whatever. I'll be back tomorrow for the same thing. I want to know when I talk to people, like, why did you enter? Okay, you entered here, but like, say it goes against you. I, I understand you won the trade, but talk to me about like, what if it didn't go your way? So with scalpers, I honestly feel like they have to plan for something if it goes against them. They can't just enter 
and hold the trade and just hope, oh, it's going to come back to green. So they have to be quick thinking. So much stuff about a scalper. You're quick thinking. You're expecting the unexpected. Those are the main two topics I personally feel go with that. If anyone has any questions, maybe they want to add something to this as well that they've noticed with themselves. This isn't just me teaching and me talking. I also hope to learn stuff from you guys. I am very big on I'm never going to stop learning with this. So if you guys have anything to say about this, I'm going to slowly move on to day traders. And if you have anything you do want to say, just let me know. And I can easily come back to this at the end of the class. But I do want to try and leave about 15 minutes at the end of this for you guys to ask questions. Because I do like to talk, but I like to help in the same like process of it all. So now we're going to talk about day traders and the personalities and or just the traits that you need to make this happen. Day traders is a very, I don't want to say interesting, but it's also like a mix up between a scalper and a swing trader. It's not really a pinpoint of I'm going to hold this for a few hours because if the move happens quicker than expected, if the drop off from your entry happens quicker than expected, you have to readjust in the moment. So you're always trying to watch, but not monitor too closely because you have to give it room to grow. You have to give the chart room to form. You can't just enter and then be down 20% and say, I have to get out. This isn't going the way I need it. For a scalper, you may have to get out that quick because you're trying to get in and out off the like smaller frames. As a day trader, are you focused on the move that's going to happen? Are you realizing the idea of I may be red? but I'm not focused on that. The chart's still holding, trends may be still holding, the pattern's still holding. So like the biggest question now is like, what personality, what traits do you really need as a day trader? The way I look at it is obviously patience. There's a lot of stuff that people, oh geez, ignore my spell on as we go through. I don't feel like that's spelled wrong. Whatever. If that's spelled wrong, let me know. I don't think it is. But uh, when you have patience, scalpers, they need patience, obviously. They have to wait for the precise entry. But after entering, there's not much patience with the scalper. You're focused on a quick in and out. You're focused on the idea of before even entering, I just want to get in. I just want to get out. You're not really focused on like, I'm going to hold this for an hour. I'll, I'll give it time to marinate. You're a scalper. You're trying to get in maybe less than a minute, maybe less than five minutes, but you're not going to hold this throughout the day. Because at that point, you're considered a day trader. You're trying to buy and hold for the overall move for the day of. Or maybe you're going to hold it for a few hours from 9.30, 9.35 a.m. Uh, Eastern all the way to like 3 p.m. Eastern. So when it comes to day trades, you're going to be red on trades. I mean, that's just a fact. Every trade you enter, you're already red. Even if right away it goes green, every entry you have starts off green and goes to red. It's going to start red and go either way. So even though you enter like, oh, I caught the bottom, every entry starts red it starts green, but it always flashes red for a second. There's always that little piece that you may not see, but it does happen. And as a day trader, you may have to hold down a few percent, 15, 20, 30, maybe even 40 or 50. If you size for that, that's what you're going with. That patience comes into play because you're not focused on, oh, I'm down this much percent. You have to go back to the charts. What was your plan initially? What are you waiting to happen long-term with this hold for a few hours? There's always another side of the thing. Some people can't handle being red. Maybe you don't want to focus on day trades or swing trades because you're going to be red in those instances because you're focused on the bigger move, not just the idea of, okay, I'm in for five minutes, I'm red, I have to get out. You have to have patience if you're going to be a day trader. Outside of patience, you have to be content with losses. And obviously you can say the same thing with scalps, swing trades, but day traders, you have to realize you can't hold a position to zero. You can't just hold it minus 80% and swing it overnight. If you size for that, that's a whole nother scenario. You size for basically minus 99% overall, you can swing that position down 80%. But if you told yourself beforehand, I told myself I would sell at a 50% loss. If it came to that, if the chart breaks down where I know that I'm not in the favor of winning now, you have to accept the fact that you're going to lose as a day trader. You have time, you have to be patient with the move, but at some point you have to accept the fact of, I'm going to lose, I'm going to get out. A scalper, it's just natural instinct. Most of the scalpers that I know, there's no fact of like, I'm selling because the chart broke, I'm selling because of this. It's just, they know from doing it so much, they just have that thought, that like feeling, I got to get out. 
I'm going to get out because I know it's safe. It's smarter if I just get out right now. I don't want to see what happens. I'll just wait for the chart to form and look for another setup in a few minutes or a few hours. Day traders have to realize you're going to be red. 20%, 30%. That's natural. That's normal. If your risk before entering is maybe a 5% loss, 10% loss, there's a whole nother scenario that goes with that now. So if you want to separate just the overall persona, the overall like personality needed compared to a plan you set beforehand, you can't really categorize those two in the same sections. If you plan a trade, a personality may not be needed. It's just discipline. You have to have that discipline of sticking to your plan because if you don't follow the plan and you lose outside of what you expected, you're going to lose that emotional stability moving forward. You're not going to trust yourself. You're not going to have the patience of letting this set up. You may not even trust yourself to enter anymore at that point. You're going to second guess entries. By the time you do enter, if you would have entered off the first, like, oh, I should get in here, but I don't know about that. That first entry may have been better than the later entry, and you could have been up 20% by then. So you have to always be content with losing and not let that shake you up, not let it think like make you think, maybe I'm not a day trader, maybe I should try swinging, maybe I should try scalping. You have to try a strategy for weeks, for months. Losses are going to happen. So many people, when they start losing, they want to try something different. They want to try, oh, I lost on this cup and handle setup. I don't want to try it no more. You have to be patient with this process because the longer you do swings, the longer you have these holds, you can't just lose and change stuff. Maybe scalping's for me. I don't want to hold any longer. I want to get in and out. Or maybe you're in a day trade. You're up 10%. Man, I should have sold 10%. Now I'm selling for a 30% loss. I'm going to change that next time. Maybe your entry wasn't good. Maybe you have to readjust. Maybe you have to fix something that you haven't like come to terms with right away. So I talked about readjusting. Obviously, scalp traders have to readjust. I don't feel like it's that much bigger compared to day traders or swingers. Readjusting is very important with pinpoints. The larger frames with like entry points, the idea of I got to get in here because the risk is minimal, the reward is bigger. How are you going to readjust if you mess up an entry point? Are you just going to close the laptop, call it a day? Are you just going to like toss your phone in the bed on the dresser and just say, I'm going to go eat food. I'll be back later and see if I can make that money back. You have to find a way to like repoint what you just did, like find failure. That's going to make it a success moment. You can't just take a loss and think it's over. I can't do the strategy. I've been doing this for two weeks. It was all green. Then this one red, like, why am I red now? You're going to lose. You have to realize that every strategy you're going to lose, but you have to minimize those losses. The risk has to be so small that when you do lose, it's not going to outweigh two losses, three losses, four losses. At that point, you have to really dig deep into like, okay, is this for me? Can I afford to hold when red, even though my emotions are flaring? I start sweating. I'm shaking. I'm second guessing my entry point at that because I'm only looking at the red P&L. You have to be able to readjust all of that mindset of I'm red, I have to get out. You're going to be red on a day trade. I mean, that's just how it is. So many like top traders, they're going to tell you most of the money they've made, they were red on the trade and it came back to green because they're trusting a the chart. They're not just entering and saying, oh, I'm red, I got to get out, I'll catch it next time. If you're red like 50, 60% and you're still holding and it goes back to green, the only thing you should be focused on is where can I readjust my execution? Where can I readjust my entry to not make that happen again? Because it was affecting me. People don't understand like when you're red, it's going to affect you mentally. And if you're not affected, you plan for it. You made sure you had that in mind. Like you were content with the fact of, okay, if I enter here, I could be down 30%, but I'm fine with that. If I have to sell at 40%, I'm fine with that. I'm sized for a 40% loss. I'm going to add this in only because this will correlate with all three. Your sizing is going to make your emotions change. If you're oversizing your account, you're going to think way different being down 20% compared to sizing super light and being down 80%. I've met so many people that don't trade no more because they had a loss that they oversized and they tried to make it back by full porting. They tried to make it back by sizing twice as heavy next time. They're not realizing they're not doing any system. There's no like, point A to point B. They're literally saying, okay, I failed to get to point B. I want to go straight to point C now. I'm just going to try it. I'm going to go heavier. I got to get this back. They're not focused on the fact that you're going to have losses. You're going to lose. You're going to have setbacks. Where are you going to readjust that as a day trader or just any type of trader? 
And going off of day traders, this is one thing that me as a personality wise, oh shoot, I'm thinking ahead right now or behind. So swing trading, being a swing trader, literally is the most, for me, this may be different for other people because it all depends. If it's like heart wrenching for you, if it's an emotional ride for you, you may be swinging with too little time. You may be swinging with too much time and it's not moving quick enough for you to be happy. When I do swing trades, I am so relaxed. I'm so content with almost everything I'm doing only because I wait for the best entry point. I wait for a fact that if I enter and I'm wrong, I'm not upset because if that level breaks, whether it's upside or downside, say I bought uh, calls at the bottom and it keeps dropping. I bought in at the lowest risk for my patient standpoint. I bought in where on the chart for my charting wise, if it doesn't go for me in my favor and it does drop when I get calls there, I plan for that. I knew this may have happened. So I prepared ahead of time. I'm size light. So if I do have to hold this in red, it's not going to affect me. I can just walk away and let the trade just do its thing. Swing traders have to be literally emotionless. Traders in general have to be that way. But as a swing trader, you literally are going to have to, you have to hold through 70% losses half the time. If you can't hold that much, you may have sized too heavy. Swing trades will be down 80% the next day, up 150%. One day they're down 20% in the first five minutes, but the next thing you know, you're back up 100% the next day. That's how much there is to do with this. It's so inconsistent. There's no telling what's going to happen. No setup's going to happen 100% exactly how you want it. So you literally have to just let stuff go. You can't be overthinking. Any trader can't be overthinking. But as a swing trader, you're trusting the long term. You're not focused on, I want to make money today. I want to buy in today and sell today. You have the idea in your head already. I can hold this for four to five days because I know if this works out the way it has to, it may take a few days, but this is the setup that I need to like work its way in. It's going to take time. I'm fine with that. If I'm down 50%, I'm fine with that. The setup is still holding. The trends are still holding. You have that in your mind well before entering. So as a swing trader, execution is huge. Obviously, scalps, it's huge for execution. Day traders, huge for execution. As a swing trader, you have to be on the larger frames. The, the 30 minute, the one hour, the two hour, the daily, the weekly, you are focused on the larger move, giving yourself time to let this play out. It's never going to be in your favor 100% of the time, but you understand from like doing this so much as a swing trader, it's not going to happen in a, in a day. It may not even happen in a week. Maybe the move doesn't even happen in two to three weeks. Can you afford to hold a play that long with the personality that you are? Can you wait for stuff to happen or do you need it like you need it. You need it. You need it. If that's how you feel, you may have to try scalping. You may even have to try a day trader, maybe an hour or two holds. Swing traders, literally, like this is how I am. I can wait for stuff. I don't need it right away. And I never used to be this way. I used to always want to just get in and out, make a hundred bucks in five minutes. That's more accomplishable for me than making a thousand bucks in a week. When you look at the time made on the trade with the money made, five minutes, a hundred dollars, a week, a thousand dollars. If you look at it from that perspective, it's like, man, like a hundred bucks in five minutes, I would love that. But how would you feel about leaving a play just sitting? You're not watching it, you're not worried about it. And then a week later, you come back or you pull up the position, you're up a thousand bucks, not doing nothing, no stress, no emotions uh, involved. You let the play work its way out because you're patient, you're relaxed, you're in tune with what is going to happen, and you're not focused on the rewards right now. So the next personality trait with this, uh, don't, don't laugh at my spelling, guys, or if I type wrong, pretty sure that's all good. So delayed gratification. You don't have to make money right away as a swing trader. It could happen if you catch the move perfect. I mean, today, good example, Shopify. If you swung Shopify from yesterday, that thing was up like 15 points today. So right there, if you were expecting a two to three week swing overnight, you would have been up over easily 100 percent, 200 percent. So that kind of stuff you're not expecting to happen, but that's the stuff that can happen. And then that's when you have to figure out, do I want to keep holding this? Am I content with this huge gain? I was expecting two weeks to be up 50 percent and I'm up 100 percent overnight. 
a lot of people, they're going to take that in a perspective of, well, what if it keeps going? I don't want to sell too soon. Are you content with the minimal or just getting by with what you wanted in two weeks in a day? A lot of people, and I used to be the same way. If I'm in a swing, I'm up, let's say 25% the first day, and I was expecting to hold this for a few days or even a week. 25% in one day for a swing, that's a good swing position right there. Do I want to trim? Do I want to trust my initial thought of I want to hold this and let the chart play out? That's where you have to readjust in the moment. You have to figure out for you, if you sell early, even though you knew I want to get in this for a week, can you stand the fact of this may go and you just sold early because you were content with 20%? Are you content with delaying that gratification? Can you afford to not sell for a profit? It may go back down 10%, down 5%. That's the whole point of a swing trader. You have to literally expect what could happen sooner, but are you ready to adjust in the moment? Do you want to wait for the overall plan to plan out and see if the long-term does happen? That's one thing that I'm happy with. I'm so simple with the way I live, the way I trade. It's all basic. There's no indicators everywhere. I have no distractions in real life. I have no distractions on my computer screen. I'm playing zones. I'm playing trends and I'm playing larger frames. It's so much more clear. It's like a mirror that I can see through. There's no fog on it. There's no spots. There's no like dirty stains. Everything is so clear when I play swing trades, when I play the larger frames and it makes me wait. I have so much patience now being a swing trader. And that's another thing I do want to add. Obviously every trader needs patience. I get that. Uh, so another question, how far out is too far and how close is too close when uh, swing trading? And do you recommend averaging down if you're confident with your setup? So I may have to type this out because I don't know if my words are going to be like comprehensible for some people. So when I swing, the first thing I always figure out is, do I want to size my full position right away? Or do I only want to size 20% of what I initially want to put in? So in the perspective, and I'll type this out just so it's easier with a visual to see. When I'm swing trading, say my full position I want is only $1,000. I can enter that full thousand right away. The only issue is if I'm down 20%, 30%, am I content with being down 200 bucks, 300 bucks that soon? So a few things that I will do, if I see a setup that looks good, but it's not 100% where I want it, like say it's at I'm looking for calls on a support zone on the larger frames. If I see it's at not my main, main support, like the main support that I'm talking about is if this support breaks, I'm out of the position. This is flipping bearish. I don't want to be in this call anymore. So say we're at the second to the last support and it's holding for a few days on the larger. It's looking good with buying pressure. I want to start a starter position on this swing, 25%, 30% of my original full account sizing or my full uh, play sizing. So my starter, I'll go in with roughly, let's just, this is all an example, obviously, let's say 300 bucks. So for a starter, I'm in 300 bucks. If we continue to dip to that main, main support, that's when I will size in the rest of that 700. So now I'm in full position. I'm not worried about I'm down this much or man, uh, do I want to size in? If you don't want to size in, guess what? You just size 30% of what you usually want and you can sell for a smaller loss because you don't trust it no more. So don't ever think like confidence is important, but don't get so hot headed, so big headed that you want to just size in right away because, oh, I've, I've hit big five times in a row. I'm just going to trust it again. There are so many times that even when I tell people I'm going to get in a swing right here. Oh, well, how much are you sizing? I'm sizing one contract. Well, like, dude, why are you only sizing one? Like this, you said you like the setup. Just because I like the setup doesn't mean I have to go all in like usual. Sometimes you may just want to like get a feel for the chart. You can always add in throughout the day or throughout the week if it's still hovering at your initial buy-in. There's no rush with swing trading. So to answer your first part of the question, how far out is too far? And when you say that, I expect you mean uh, expiration, but you also said how close is too close? I'm going to answer that based off the contract premium compared to in the money and out the money and also the expiration with the time that you want for your swing. So the biggest thing that I look for, and this is starting to turn into like a swing trade talk now, which I hope you guys are fine with that. If you guys want to hear more about scalp strategies or day trade strategies, please type that in the chat and I'll get to those too. So when I'm scalping, the biggest thing I look for is 
contract prices at the money. So when I'm looking at these, I don't care if it's the week of, the following week, the monthly expo next month, uh, leap with a yearly. I want to see what the contract prices will look at if they're right at the money. A lot of people are going to say, well, don't you want to like put some space in between that, like take 10 slots out, five slots out of the money? It depends on how much time you're adding. There's no single answer with, I'm going to buy this contract because, oh, the stock's at $65 a share and I'm playing two months out, I'm going to get $100 a uh, hundred premium strike price, $35 move. I have two months. It's okay. Well, you have to realize this though. What's the like Greek correlation with the price of those contracts? Are you just buying those contracts? Cause Oh, they're only 50 bucks. I can afford that. You have to realize if it doesn't move in your favor, those contracts being that far out, they're going to lose value so much quicker compared to playing something right at the money or two slots out of the money. So the first thing I'm focused on is, if I buy this contract that's, let's just say, uh, $5 a share out of the money, say the stock's at $100 a share, and I'm buying a contract that's 105 strike price, and I'm playing, let's say, a month out, what's the price of this contract? Can a five-point move happen on this stock within a month going off the historical price action movement? I'm taking into consideration how the chart moves in a month time frame. Can this stock move that quick? If you know a stock that can move, let's say $5 in a week, you can play a $5 out premium strike a month with time. That's logical. You have to think from a logical perspective, not the idea of I hope this can move and I can turn $50 into $500 into a contract. You have to play smart and not hopeful. That's one of the biggest things I try and tell people. You're not playing to make money. You're playing to have a risk minimal and the reward is going to be in your favor every time with probability. So answering the second part of your question, how close is too close? Can you afford the contract, whether it's the premium or the expiration with the time? Can you afford to buy with a week and not worry about the fact that if the move doesn't happen with less time, your contract's going to burn so quick. But if you add two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, if the stock doesn't move at all with consolidation, your value is not going to move as much as a week of expiration for a swing. If you play t uh, 10 slots out on the week of, say the stock doesn't move all day, you'll probably be down about 50 to 40% the first day, even though the stock did not move. So it's all about your risk. Can you afford to hold a position that may be cheap and you can make a lot of money, but you also have to realize that contract will lose value even faster since you're so far out of the money. I personally like to play as close as possible, but I'm not going to pay freaking $1,500 a contract. $800 a contract. I won't pay that. I'm usually looking at between, if I'm looking at like a major stock, say Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, maybe not Amazon, but NVIDIA, Microsoft, Tesla, if you go a month out, they're going to be expensive at the money. But no one Tesla can move quick. No one NVIDIA can move quick. No one Microsoft can move quick. Say, uh, I think NVIDIA is at like 270 something a share. I know NVIDIA can move to 280 easily in a day or two. It can move the 300 in a month easily if the momentum switches the buying power. So I understand how stocks move. So a month out, getting a 300 call on NVIDIA when it's initially 277 a share, a $23 move in a month for NVIDIA is possible. We've seen it happen. But do you want to risk that? That's when your personality comes in. Can you afford to hold that knowing that it may keep dipping? Knowing that, okay, I'm out $23 on the premium. Can I get closer? Can I at least gain traction to sell for a profit? So when it comes to that, you asked averaging down. If you're confident in the setup, should I average down? If you're full-sized on the initial entry, do you really want to average down and increase your normal sizing? If I'm only sized in like the example on the screen, a starter 300, my initial full size is 1,000, I can afford to size down 700 because that's the room I have to put in still. But do I trust myself? Am I confident in the setup? If I'm not, I can cut for a smaller loss based off the fact that I only sized in 30% of what I usually do. So it's all it's all like a big, like you're looking at everything. It's not just, I'm going to size down. Well, how much did you initially size compared to what you usually size? Is the setup where it needs to be for it to bounce again? Are you just buying in because, oh, I'm down 40%. I want to buy in more because I want to lower my average. 
you have to wait for a setup to form before you just average down. You can't just average down. Oh, I'm down 80%. Let me average in another thousand when I'm already in a thousand and my average is going to be down to 40 now, minus 40%. So I know a lot of people, they just average down because they're, they're red. They have no chart set up like, oh, this can bounce here. So I'm going to average in. Oh, I'm, I'm green on this trade. So I'm going to average in more because it could keep going. You have to realize there's more than just, okay, stocks at 250 a share. I'm going to get a contract for 300 for next week because if that happens, I'm making so much money. That's not a logical standpoint. So there's more to it than just, I'm going to average down because I'm red. Oh, I'm, I'm going to sell because I'm green. Where is the chart? Are you content with what your actions may do and the results of those actions? Can you live with what may happen to you? That's where the idea of like, just you as a person, I can afford to hold certain positions and they go to minus 99%. And I'm just smiling because that was my risk. I prepared to lose the whole thing if it did come to that. So when it does happen, I'm not upset. My plan initially before entry, if this goes to minus 99%, I'm going to hold this because my personality wise, if I size, let's say 500 bucks, that can go to zero and I'm not, I don't care. That's nothing with how much I usually sell for a loss on a larger sizing. Does that answer your question a little bit? I know I kind of like always go off on a tangent, but I try and bring the whole idea into perspective. There's a lot more to it than just, am I too far out with the expiration? Am I too far out for this contract premium? Can the stock move that much in the time that you gave it? That's the biggest question you have to ask. If you're trading a stock, like I don't know if people here watch Ford, uh, the symbol is just F. Ford is not going to move $10 in a day. Ford is not going to move $5 in a day. So why are you buying a week out expiration for a $3 move, a $4 move? Can that logically happen? That's how I look at all my plays. That's how I look at everything I do. If I don't know how a stock moves, I'll watch it for a week or two to see how it flows on price action, to see if there's a lot of volume and if that's what pushes it, or is it just zones that make it move the way it does up and down? There's always stuff to look at outside of, okay, I'm in the trade. What do I do now? You have to prepare for almost everything. There's always preparation. The execution matters. Everything that I put underneath the swing trader, the day trader, the scalper, they all work as one, but you have to realize each section or each personality, whether you're a scalper, a day trader, or a swinger, you have to have different attributes that don't flow with the other people. Like as a scalper, you have to be quick. As a swinger, you're not going to be quick. You're going to be waiting. You're plotting. You're literally just relaxed. You're waiting. Once you enter, you're not freaking out when you're red. You're chilling. Like you should not be no heartbeat going quick. You're not sweating. You're not questioning your entry point. As a scalper, that's going to happen. You're going to question, did I enter bad? You're going to question, maybe I should have waited. There's a lot of stuff you have to realize if you oversize, you're always going to feel that way no matter what you do. So it all comes down to sizing. It comes down to your patience, your emotional standpoint, your emotional stability. How are you as a person? And use that to find what works best for you. Does anyone have any more questions or that answered my question? Thank you. Sorry for making you go off topic a little, but that really shows your personality as a swing trader. Yeah, don't feel like I'm going off topic. I kind of like classes like these. I have the main topics figured out and I kind of just talk in the moment because I'm very big on authenticity. I'm very big on speaking my mind in the moment. I don't like planning stuff. And then like, I forget what I was supposed to say. And I'm just like, um, 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 so I'm trying to like verbally make all this happen in the moment for you guys. I want you to see that I actually talk about how I feel and not just reading a piece of paper or something. Like I have no notes in front of me. I'm literally just going off what I hope you guys can learn from this, what I wish I knew when I first started. A lot of this stuff, I didn't even know what a swing trader was in my first year. All I knew was buy and sell. Buy low, sell high. And half these people buy high, sell low. I mean, it's just one of those things. So if anyone has any more questions, we have about seven minutes left before the hour's up. I want to get to everyone. If you don't have a question, you can stick around, just hear me talk more if you want. But yeah, don't be scared to drop questions, guys. Even if it's just like, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. Like, I struggle with this and I hope to overcome it one day. Like, there's no wrong thing to say right now. You're here to learn. You're here to literally pick my brain and my experience for like, this is your time right now. I'm here for you.
and I can easily just keep talking. I can go back up and summarize each category again. I can explain how I scalp. I can explain how I day trade. I can talk you through what my hardest part of overcoming emotional standpoints were. I mean, I'm literally just trying to help you guys. I don't have to be here, but I'm here for you. It's one of those things. So just let me know. Type any questions, or I can just go off on a tangent like I usually do. Uh, I want to add my experience as a scalper, if you don't mind. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Oh, you, you already had tight. That's perfect. Uh, scalping looks bad, ex uh, especially from a risk and reward standpoint, because I'm risking over $1,000 to make 100 to 200. That is correct. Scalpers take a lot of trades, which is heavy on the mental, especially when having to take a loss or taking multiple losses in a row, then having the strength to walk away or, or keep going. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if you want me to speak on that because I relate to that. Reading that literally gave me flashbacks to years ago when I didn't understand what I was doing, when I literally would do stuff and just like, oh, I made a hundred bucks, I'm done. But then at the end of the day, it's like, am I really content with a hundred bucks? Let me go back in and try and scalp again. I think that's also a trait I can add under that. Being able to just be content with the minimal, being happy with success and not the bigger picture. Scalping is stressful. That's honestly my perspective wise, the most stressful and emotionally draining type of trading is scalping. Because if you don't stand by rules, if you don't stand by a plan, you can blow your whole account in a day. If you over trade, if you're just trying to make 50 bucks, but then you lose a hundred bucks. A lot of people don't take into consideration like some pros that do this. They are always focused on Okay, if I enter a scalp here and I lose 50%, I'm if I size 5,000 and my risk is 50%, I'm already telling myself I'm willing to lose 2,500. I know people and I used to be one of them. Once you're down 2,500, you don't want to sell. Like you're down 50%, you told yourself this is where I have to get out. Now that you're in the moment experiencing that, you're starting to realize I really don't want to sell for this big of a loss. I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Or they want to size down or they want to average in because they don't want to risk only that much. They think a small pullback can bring them back to break even if they add in. Scalping is so draining. The risk to reward is also very iffy. You don't have as much control over the chart setup since you are basically entering off a quick move either way. The risk to reward, like you said, you're risking over a thousand bucks to make a hundred to two hundred. If you're holding it to zero, you are risking a thousand bucks. But if before the trade, you told yourself, okay, I'm going to enter here and the contract is roughly going to be this price. If I sell for a 20% loss, say the risk is only 200 bucks. But if the play works out, the contract could possibly go to this price. I could make 400 bucks. So going off that, like obviously not a smart analogy, but going off a $200 loss and a $400 win, your risk to reward is in your favor. If you have that same setup moving forward, out of 10 trades, if your risk is $200 and your reward is 400, say it works out 50-50. Overall, with that strategy, you lost 200 bucks five times, which is obviously 1,000 bucks, but you won 400 bucks five times, that's 2,000 bucks. So overall, you're up 1,000 overall. A lot of people don't look at it that way, though. They just want to enter and then figure it out once they get in. You always have to have a plan, whether you're scalping, day trading, or swinging. There's always something to plan for. There's always something to prepare with. And there's always readjusting. I mean, that's one thing I'm always going to talk about. It's not about changing. It's about readjusting. If you change what you're doing, you're never going to find a solution to it. So you always have to readjust one little aspect to make the overall picture work. It's just one of those things. And walking away. Walking away is so difficult, man. Half the time, like I'm better now. I can sit here all day and not trade. Like today, I literally didn't trade almost all day to the end of the day. I'm able to do that because over time, I just got sick and tired of forcing stuff where I knew I shouldn't do it. Now I can sit here maybe two days straight, three days straight and never make a trade. A lot of traders are like, bro, how, you're sitting there not making money though. I'm also sitting here not losing money. I'm not risking money in my portfolio. Every trade you make is a risk. If you just sit there and watch, you're never taking a risk. You're learning in the process. That's all you're doing. Someone else type something because seeing his name, I, I want to see someone else say something. Perez, let me, let me see what you're thinking, man. You're here almost every class. Let me hear something. I haven't really scrolled through the list. So I don't really know who else is here, but let me check real quick. So I see Alex in here. 
Millie, I see you in here too. Bro, you're saying truths. I mean, I'm I'm speaking on experience, man. PTSD experience, especially with swing trading. Swing trading is rough if you don't know what you're doing. Scalping is even worse if you don't have a disciplined mindset. Everything falls back on preparation. It's so hard to stand by your word when you say something. The hardest is to sit on your hands. That's 100% truth. Personality-wise, if you know you can't sit on your hands, you probably should not be a scalper because you're going to want to get in so much. Like you lose, you want to buy back in. As a swinger, you also have to sit on your hands because when you're in a position, you can't just sell right away. You have to let the play work out. So that's that's probably a trait that works with every trader, obviously. If you can sit on your hands, you are going to win long-term because you know when not to trade, you know when to trade. And that's the most difficult part of a trader is decision-making. Are you letting your emotions make the decision or are you letting the chart form and now you're making a decision? If you're ever overthinking a trade, your emotions are the only reason. You're never going to look at a chart and say, holy crap, like what if this happens? What if this happens? You're overthinking. That's your mindset now. It's not the chart. It's your mindset. Uh, I'm doing exactly what you're saying to control myself to go in on good trades. Literally, let the chart speak for you. Your mind is going to tell you now's the best time. Oh, get in before it's too late. You're never going to miss a trade. There's I, I hate when people respond to me when I say the best trade is no trade or you didn't miss the move today. People will respond with, dude, I missed the move. You said the same thing last month. You missed the move last month. You missed it this month. It's going to happen again. If you prepare, you're not going to miss the next move. It's all about preparation, readjusting. You're not changing nothing. You're readjusting. Same thing with life. You're not changing your environment. You're readjusting as you work through what needs to be gone, what needs to come in. A quick change that way, you have to readjust everything in the moment. Take time with it. Find little pieces that have to be fixed. That's really what it's about. Learn, see it transpiring in front of you. Literally, that's literally all you have to do. Figure out who you are. Use that to trade a certain style. That's the biggest thing, and that's probably the best way to end this. Figure out who you are. Use that to find your style. I'm not saying who you are as a trader, who you are mentally, your thought process. Are you patient? Can you sit and not do anything and not want results every single day? Results are not going to happen every day. And if you want results, guess what? If you buy in, you're going to get a result of losing or winning. If I sit here and don't trade, the only result that I have, I have the same money to work with the next day. Nothing's different about my emotions, my account. Everything is just sitting and I'm learning. So I'm going to pause this because I think that's a good place to stop.